Back in the 1800s, there was a man that owned the ground where Waverly Hills sits. Uh, he had an only daughter, and she was educated. And she decided that she would like to have her own school once she got a little older. So her father came up to this hill where, where the building's set right now and built a small one-room schoolhouse and let her teach school to the local children. And she decided that she would name the building Waverly, and that was for her favorite author. And from there, that's how Waverly Hills first got its name of Waverly. Around 1910, when tuberculosis really started, you know, uh, taking its grip on, on the area, um, they, they built a hospital on the land that uh, Colonel Hayes had owned. Within a couple of years, they outgrew that. They had to add on additions. You know, they had originally 40 or 50 patients there, but uh, tuberculosis just kept, uh, you know, becoming more and more prevalent. So in 1926, they built the state-of-the-art hospital, uh, one of the features of which was to take advantage of these cooling breezes and, you know, they didn't know much about uh, tuberculosis back then. They thought really all you could do was uh, keep a person wet rested and well nourished and give them lots of fresh air and that's what would cure the disease. Waverly was one of the first tuberculosis hospitals in the southeastern part of the United States. It was built, actually finished in 1926, the current building that is there. It treated tuberculosis patients all the way up to the early 1960s when a cure and penicillin was developed at that point. After that, it became a geriatric hospital for several years, and that hospital for the elderly was closed down in the early 80s. And ever since then, it's been pretty much vacant as a working facility of any kind. The best I can measure the building, we have 108,000 square feet. Uh, it would house 500 patients, and um, at the time that it was built, which is 1926 when it was completed, this was considered a state-of-the-art building. There was always one main doctor, and then there was usually six other doctors under him, and then from there, it would vary, you know, maybe go up or down. And then the nursing staff, uh, they actually had a separate building that was behind the main hospital. It was just to house the nurses, and I understood that there was anywhere from 60 to 75 nurses at a time that lived in that structure. Waverly's paranormal legends have gone back for years and years. People believe that over 60,000 people died there at one time. And reports of hauntings and strange, unexplained activities have gone on there for years and years. I've investigated quite a few areas that have been reportedly haunted in the uh, northern Kentucky and southern Indiana area. And Waverly is by far the most active place I've ever been. There are a, a number of locations in uh, Louisville, but I think the holy grail of hauntings is probably Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Uh, they say that's the most haunted place in the United States, if not, you know, on Earth. Most people say 63 to 65,000 people died there. Um, when you look at the records, the experts say there's no way that many people could have died. You know, they said most likely it was tops 8,000 or 7,000 people. But still, you think about 7,000 people dying in one location over the course of 20, 30 years. That's quite a lot. There, there's been a large debate on how many people actually died up here. So we, uh, we started a memorial site where we tried to get people and families that had any kind of death records where we could prove that people up here died up here. We're up to about 11,000 that we can prove. We, we assume that there's a lot more than that. Well, Waverly's always been known to be on it. And, um, you know, no one's gonna believe anything until they see it for themselves. I wouldn't either, but I have seen things up here for myself. It can scare you, I don't care who you are, you're not ready for it. I've ran out of this building more times than I could count, and I will again, I'm sure. <laughs> it's not the last time. But uh, there's a lot of stories that do go along with the building, and you know, a lot of them we don't know what's true, what's not. There are some stories that we have found out that are true, 
one of the famous stories is Timmy, one of the younger patients, you know, they had a little wing and a, uh, a rooftop balcony bit built for the children and you go there and there's still a swing set set up and they leave balls throughout the uh, building and supposedly spirits will move these balls. A lot of times it's um, supposed to be children playing with the balls and Timmy, I don't know that they have any proof of it, but he was supposedly a, a, you know, a patient who died there and his ghost sort of lingers on, sort of trying to recapture the childhood he never had. Ralph is supposedly a maintenance man that used to work at Waverly Hills. Uh, people seem to hear uh, chains, not in the typical ghostly sense, but more like sounds of keys and so forth walking down the hallways. And uh, the owners kind of contribute that to a man named Ralph, who used to work at Waverly years ago, who was the maintenance and caretaker for the building. 502 is where the nurse's station was, and um, one of the nurses uh, hung herself up there. Supposedly she was pregnant and um, was going to have to raise a child by herself, and uh, patients found her body there, and supposedly uh, room 502 is the most active uh, room in Waverly Hills. People have seen um, the apparition of a what looks to be a nurse in a uniform hanging from the ceiling. Uh, other people have seen sort of your typical, stereotypical nurse walking uh, the corridor outside that um, room. Um, they've seen nurses in other part of the building as well, but they all attribute it to this nurse who supposedly hung herself up there. Waverly Hill Sanatorium as it stands today is much more than just the paranormal background that they may have heard about. It's full of history. It's a legitimate historical landmark in this town. And the Mattingleys recently purchased it. Um, they're the ones that uh, you know get the credit for saving the building. They um, you know conduct tours uh, around Halloween, but then they do historical tours. But um, you know they stabilized the building. They put in new windows. Um, they're currently working with a, a local architect and uh, the plan is to turn it into a B&B &B or something like that. I know exactly what I want Waverly to be in the future. Basically the first floor is going to stay kind of like it used to be kind of administrative where you know you could use it for different office type venues, um, whether they're gift stores or whatever. We would have the second, third and fourth floor as, as a bed and breakfast and then on the fifth floor that would actually be the restaurant and uh, rooftop restaurant, you know, that's, it's a beautiful view up there. You get to look out over the Ohio River, you can look across the river and see Caesars, and it's, uh, it's just a great view, uh, nice breeze, and it's just, it's just perfect.